Hello and uh, welcome to Journeys in Transformation Analytics. Uh, today with me I have uh, Priyanka Jain and uh, Priyanka is uh, she, she's a CEO of a company called Iring and uh, she's one of the foremost thinkers in the space of how do you build a data-driven culture in large organization. So Priyanka, welcome. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Priyanka, uh, I mean, it's, we, obviously we have chatted a lot uh, on this topic uh, and kind of comparing how why you think about it, how we think about it, but just how do you actually define uh, what, what is a data-driven culture? How would you, how would you talk about that? Yeah. So, um, Amrish, we use 4Ds framework to define uh, a data-driven culture. And, and, and the 4Ds stand for a data-driven culture has mature data maturity, uh, which means you have an easy and appropriate access to data, uh, to single source of truth um, with proper governance and so on. So that's first D is data maturity. Second D is data literacy, where, wherein the people, ha again, have appropriate level of data literacy to turn that data that you now have uh, access to easy access to, to, to something meaningful, to insights, to, to drive their decisions. So that's second is data literacy. The third is data driven leadership. Is your leadership at a, at a point where they are able to emulate what they want the rest of the organization to do? Do they have, uh, do, are they holding their team accountable? Do they have zero based budgeting? All of those aspects, which truly makes the data driven leader. And then the fourth aspects, uh, aspect is data-driven decision-making process. Is there a process that pulls all of these elements together where data is part of decision-making process, where you're doing a forward-looking or a backward-looking? Now, we have translated these Ds into 30 dimensions. And that is what we measure when we go in into the organization. Uh, and on a scale of 0 to 10, it's a Likert 11.4. And we measure these uh, through, you know, basically executive buy-in as well as enterprise-wide survey that together tells us what is the data culture quotient for the organization. Uh, and then from there on, you kind of start have figuring out like, here are my reds, here are my greens. What do you, where do I go from there? So that's how we define data culture. Like in an assessment, after an assessment, you will, you will kind of go and do, do, do that. But one question, Bianca, is this, the whole topic of data-driven culture, like how, how do you actually bring it up to a senior executive? Like, is it like, do most of your conversations are executives who are already have bought in that they, they see the value of it or they're trying to do something else and then they stumble upon it? Like, how, how do these conversations start? And that's a great question, Amresh. We are seeing, uh, it, it's again, uh, just like everything else, it's a Gaussian distribution. <laughs> so it's a bell curve. Some, some of the leaders, some of the executives see building a data culture as an essential tool for them to survive this world, COVID or not, right? Mm -hmm. they, they see it as an essential tool to survive and actually thrive in this new world. Some of them are saying, oh, we need data literacy. And they're thinking of just only one component, but they think, okay, you know, we, we need our, our business managers to speak the language of date business, which is data literacy. Yes. Uh, and so they're saying we need data literacy. And, so, uh, and often they ha uh, ha hand over that baton to their L and D leader. And some of the folks are, are sort of in denial where they're saying, oh, we are not digital, so we don't need data. Yeah. You know, so there's a, there's a whole spectrum of them, but I think more and more people are waking up to the fact that they need to do something. Now, they, they may be just looking at data maturity as building data culture. They may be looking at just data literacy or parts of it. And some of the, you know, um, vanguards are basically being saying, we need a culture of data and hand, hanging, you know, basically handing that baton to often chief data officer or chief analytics officer to saying, how do we do, how do we make this happen? We totally need it. And, and what, what I see actually in a lot of my conversations, uh, Priyanka, it's, it's kind of two, it falls in two camps. People, some people who are like completely like bought into it and they see the importance of it. And they normally are the chief data analyst or the chief analytics officers. And, but there's also a fairly big camp, which is like, this is kind of on the learning program, right? It's like, you know, the learning program I want to start. And this is something I need to kind of do around it too, because everyone is talking about data. I mean, do you see a lot of that? Yeah, so the second camp is what I was saying, where they're thinking, oh, um, learning, just, just hand this over, hand this and fix my culture, hand this to <laughs> L&D leader, can you fix my culture? Yeah. And, and I think, uh, and, and, and I'm having a lot of conversations with the L&D strategists and leaders, and they're saying uh, that's, that sort of is like, um, you know, 
putting the horse before the cart and or putting the cart before the horse and yeah. you know instead of looking at the bird thing holistically they're thinking about fixing fixing the culture through just upskilling just fix it just put put all our people on one some training and then make it make them good overnight <laughs> right like <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly I mean, and that that's that's kind of the two two camps and I, and I see a lot of like these free digital apps and and all kinds of tools that are available like yeah you go to like udemy or coursera and you kind of be data literate and i mean so what do you say to kind of that i mean what like what, what do you see when you see an organization go down yeah. that path you know i think i think amrish that is um, that is how we started too when i started eight years ago when i started a ring i thought you know hey data science is not rocket science and and people are making a mountain out of a molehill how do we how do we simplify this and i started thinking you know we can just evangelize we can we can empower people and we started training you know 200 people at google and you know 100 people here at box or the entire executive team at epson and all of that right we started doing all of that thinking if we train pockets of people and upskill them we would have trained the changed the culture of the organization and we did that for actually i would say 3 4 years and what we found and we were like a little bit more data driven so we would do a pre pre you know pre survey post survey pre post of the of the training awesome everybody loved the training and then 3 months later you go in and you do a survey and you see you know what in your world has changed nothing nada nothing has changed because it's business as usual yeah the training was great you know piyanka that was great training but and and i think that's many of the organize i mean we started this data literacy work 8 years ago many of the people who are starting on this journey now they're thinking the same way we thought so you know and it, it's natural to think oh you know all I, all I, and and often now people are thinking it's one training you demo class whatever else university class put them all through this one training 3 hours you know and suddenly they will be able to start using data overnight i think it's it's um <laughs> it's one of the things not to do okay. um you need to have clear understanding of where you are at, at right now so you know some kind of data culture um quotient some kind of assessment also your data literacy ass- assessment where are the people right now and right. the other thing is not everybody needs to be the you know you and i amresh we are let's say data scientists we yes. need to be a different level of data literacy than marketing managers product managers or even the call center you know people who are picking up the call and right. answering the call so what data literacy is not one size fit all and enough. too many people are thinking and simplifying and saying oh i'm going to send them through one hour, you know three hours of training <laughs> no we have, we have to talk a lot more about that that's that's like a little bit of a deeper conversation so thank you so much for coming to the show and sharing some insights and some of the learnings that you have had thank yes, you so much thank you for having me